the, the second big area I want to talk about is craft. And we believe, just like we believe you need, that you want to study the past in order to know how to employ your tools for the future, we also believe you need to perfect your craft in order for you to be able to really use it and break the form and you know, come up with new things because you need to know why the craft is what it is and what effect it has and what effect you're going to have if you don't do it so that you, have, you can use that powerfully. Um, so I'm going to start. So the areas of craft are book, lyrics, and music. And um, I'm going to start by talking about book, which is also sometimes known as the libretto, the spoken dialogue, both in a scene and also spoken dialogue within a song. Now, confusingly, we use that word book to mean both things, right? What I was just talking about, book is, some, is the story. Book is also just the written word. So I apologize. That's a little confusing. It means both of those things, but they're separate things. So um, we believe that it's the job of the entire team to write the book in the large sense, I guess in the capital B sense, the story, but it's the job of the book writer to write the book, the actual words. And the book writer's job is a little bit bigger than that. Um, the whole team collaborates on what the story is going to be and makes their decisions about what the theme is and what they want to accomplish with the story. Eventually, then, the book writer writes an outline. The, the way, it doesn't always happen this way. There's a million ways for it to happen. But this is the way we, we think can lead to a successful musical and is worth you trying out while you're here this year. If it doesn't work for you, you can abandon it and try something else or try different things on every project. But in this room, we like to think that the next step is uh, the book writer writes an outline that sort of codifies the basics of the story that the team has decided they want to tell and then writes a rough draft with just the words, with no lyrics and not even a mention of songs. And you're going to find me, especially those of you who take the book lab this, you're going to find me an absolute tyrant about this. You're, write, you're writing an outline for a musical. Why won't I let you mention that there's going to be a song? Um, you're going to hear this from me a million times over the year, but the main reason is because as soon as you just write and they sing a song about how much they love each other or whatever it is, you have, um, you have given up your job as a book writer to tell the story of the song. So in the outline, I would rather that you wrote the story of the song. They profess their love for each other, but how difficult it's going to be because their parents don't like each other, whatever. Tell the story of the song. Because as soon as you just say they sing a song, you have a tendency to abdicate responsibility for the story that's going to be happening in a song. So that's why I'm so picky. And I say, don't say they sing. Just tell me the story. Then once you have a rough draft of the book that tells the story, then the team can get back together and do the song spotting. That's when you look at the piece and say, OK, now, where is this going to sing? Uh, where are the songs going to go? What dialogue is going to get replaced? What, what new things have to happen? Um, who has the highest stakes in this scene? Who's, who's, who's got the most emotional journey at this moment? You know, so who should be singing this and, and when? So that's, and again, I think that's something for the whole team to do. Then once the, um, once the songwriters go off to write the songs that you've decided in the song spotting, the book writer is then going to be responsible to revise the book once those songs get written. Because some of your written material won't be useful anymore. It'll be covered by the song, and you don't want to be redundant. So you have to go and revise the book and make sure that, again, every word you've written reveals character, um, uh, moves the plot along and leads to the next song. So it needs to set up the song and make sure whatever information we need to have the song pay off, we'll get without being redundant. It's a really, really tough gig, really tough gig. And um, the, the book writer is also uh, responsible for any internal dialogue. And sometimes that comes afterwards. Sometimes the, the songwriting team will come and say, there's this one spot where we're transitioning between refrains or something, and we sure could use a line or two of dialogue, because we don't want to have to cover this in lyric. And the book writer can write that. But the book writer needs to be very succinct, leave room for songs, reveal character, move the plot forward, all that kind of stuff. So if you are a book writer who is not a lyricist, if you are, quote unquote, just a book writer, and I don't mean that at all, because it's a huge thing, it can be a bit of a thankless task. And I find it's often really difficult to get really good playwrights to consider being musical theater book writers. Um, because you know they do a lot of work, and then the songwriting team comes along and steals all their best stuff and all their most important moments and turns them into songs, and then nobody talks about them afterwards. They always only talk about the score. So when a musical is really successful, people tend to talk about, in particular, the composer, maybe the composer lyricist. Uh, so for instance, 
we always hear people talking about Stephen Schwartz is Wicked. Do we know who wrote the book for Wicked? Winnie Holtzman, thank you. But most people probably don't. Like, Winnie who? Winnie Holtzman wrote the book. Uh, but we don't talk about it as Winnie Holtzman's Wicked. We talk about it as Stephen Schwartz's. On the other hand, if the show is a flop, the first place the blame is going to go is on the book, on the story. And the book writer's going to get all the blame. So it makes it sort of tough, because it means if the sh it, you're going to get all of the blame and none of the credit if you're just the book writer. Um, I, I came across this article that I, I want to read you a little bit from. In, in early 2016, Charles Isherwood, who was the theater critic for the New York Times at the time, said in an article that he found it surprising that Hamilton was nominated for a Tony in the book of a musical category because the show is almost sung through. This is what Christopher Isherwood said. Why should he get a Tony for the book? This, there's, there's hardly any dialogue. Well, this made the, the, the person who was then the president of the Dramatists Guild really, really mad. And he wrote a letter to the editor of the Times. And I want to read you a little bit of it because I think it's really cool. He said, as award season is upon us, those of us at the Dramatists Guild can't help noticing that confusion exists about the role of the book writer in crafting a musical. Some critics and fans share the misperception that book writers merely craft the dialogue between the show's songs. They even presume that a musical with minimal spoken text barely has any book at all. This is not the case. The Dramatists Guild would like to offer a few lessons in this misunderstood art from some of Broadway's leading musical theater practitioners. And then the rest of the letter had paragraphs. I won't read you all of them, although I, I, I think I have this as a handout so you can read some of the other ones. Um, but these are some of the people that he went to to get them to talk about it. So James Lapine, who won a Tony Award for the book of Into the Woods and Falsettos and Passion, he said, a book of a musical determines the show's structure. If anything, a sung through musical demands even more from the book writer. The songs must carry the storyline and the lyricist must work hand in hand with the librettist to determine what each song must accomplish dramatically and emotionally and how collectively these songs add up to a satisfying piece of storytelling. Then um, Marcia Norman, who won a Tony Award for the book of The Secret Garden, said, without book writers, a musical is a Ziploc bag of pearls, but with a book, the pearls become a necklace of great value. A musical without a book would be a concert. If there is a story, there is a book, even if no one says a single sentence. The book is the thinking, the storytelling. It is the design, the big picture into which the actors enter and sing. Then David Lindsay Abair, who won a Tony Award for the book of Shrek the Musical, said, thinking that a book writer's only job on a musical is the dialogue is like thinking that an architect's only job on a house is the siding. And then lastly, uh, there's, a, there's a paragraph from Alan Menken, who of course is not a book writer, he's a composer, with so many accolades I can't even list them, but among them he got Oscar awards for The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Pocahontas, and he got the Tony for Newsies and was nominated for the Tony for Aladdin, Sister Act, The Little Mermaid, and Beauty and the Beast. So he's got a lot going on there. And here's what he said about book writing. Perhaps the toughest, most pivotal, and thankless job in musical theater is that of the book writer. Their work lays the groundwork that allows our songs to soar. Their words are the runway we take off of, the, the flight plan we follow, and the key to our safe landing. So that's why, and, and that's why we also think that the entire team needs to work together on the book, because that's one of the best ways to make sure that every element, the written word, the lyrics, and the music are all contributing to the story. But it is the book writer who codifies all of that with the outline and the rough draft, and then should continue. You don't, you're not done then. You should continue to oversee the rest of the work, uh, it, uh, constantly making sure that everything that the songwriting team are doing is still um, you know, bringing forth the story that was agreed upon. That's, you gotta keep at them to do that. Sometimes the songwriters will wanna just go away and write their songs and not, um, not show them to you or talk to you about them, but you've gotta, sometimes you have to be really adamant as a book writer and say, no, I need to know what you're doing. I need to know if it's, if it's delivering what we all decided it should deliver. Uh, so it is sometimes thankless, but it is absolutely essential. And also, you still do go to the bank and collect your royalties, whether anybody says your name or not. <laughs> so that's about books.